Welcome back to Stack and Growth Snacks. I'm Steph Quignola, and I'm here with senior copywriter for Refine Labs, Eric Sina. Eric, I'm so excited to be back. We're back at snacks. Uh, what is the best snack you have in your house right now? If I told you to go to your pantry, grab me something, send it to Austin, what would you grab? Best snack I have in my house right now. Oh man, that's a, that's a hard question to answer. But um, I think for me, and I don't snack a lot these days aside from, again, the occasional gusher, uh, probably has to be frosted brown sugar cinnamon pop tarts and just that flavor. And they have to be toasted. Cannot be microwaved. I'm very particular about that. Um, but yeah, that's the best flavor, Pop Tart. Okay, Eric, diving into it, we're building a unique brand voice. You've got your tone, but how do you keep it consistent? How do you adapt that voice and those guidelines to different communication streams like socials, emails, website, any other place that you're putting words? So I, I think there's a difference here between voice and tone, right? Um, voice is sort of that consistent thread that you have as a brand that that way you speak that way you show up that is really sort of static i would say you know um again pretty consistent doesn't really change much from from year to year from quarter to quarter from campaign to campaign but i will say tone is a little different tone is the way you modulate that voice right uh, depending where you are who you're speaking to and things like that so an example would be tone for linkedin a little more buttoned up a little more professional Whereas when you're on Instagram or Reddit, a little more colloquial, um, you're making a few more cultural references and things like that. So um, voice should be consistent. Voice should be pretty static. I would say that doesn't change much, but tone, I think, depending on where you are, where you show up and um, who you're speaking to, I think that that you know sort of modulates a little bit. And how do you balance consistency with freshness, uh, making sure things don't get stale or feel repetitive. You want your voice to be consistent. You want your voice to be sort of the same year in, year out, quarter in, quarter out. But um, you also don't want things to get stale. You don't want things to sort of plateau and drop off, especially when it comes to your audience, because you do have such a small window to take advantage of their attention, right? And I think for me, um, that just comes with coming up with different campaign themes, different concepts and things like that. And I think Nike is a great example of this. So as we know, it's a 50, 60 year old brand even, uh, but it sounded the same for decades. All about competition, all about you know, sort of doing your best and excellence and things like that. Um, and there's sort of the spirit that is imbued in this brand and has been for, like I said, a while. But um, as you think about the different campaigns, they're all pretty different. And especially as of recently, their latest campaign is, am I a bad person? all about painting the athlete as this hyper competitive person that will do anything to win, you know, will win at all costs, even if that means sort of embracing the villain role and even like, I don't know, like stepping over people uh, along the way, which is kind of an insane message to have, um, but it's sort of a left turn from what they've done before. If you think about Nike, historically, they've been the brand that's like, Everybody can be an athlete, right? Every everyone can be an athlete. You don't have to be an NBA player making tens of millions of dollars a year. Like you could just be a regular person off the street, running, um, jogging, whatever it is. You're an athlete. Whereas I think this speaks to that really competitive, that really almost like visceral insight of sometimes you just got to be, excuse my French, but like that a hole really to to get your way and to, um, you know, to really kind of make it and excel. And so uh, that is an example of a brand that is a heritage brand that has been around for a while, doing something different, you know, little by little, every single time, um, but still remaining the same, still remaining true to who they are, which is, you know, competition and excellence and greatness. Yeah, and what are some signs that a brand voice needs to be updated or how should a how should a voice evolve as a business grows? Honestly, I, I think a brand voice, although it's pretty consistent, um, if it does change, it should change with the times. It should change as culture changes and evolves. And, you know, no brand has been the same uh, for all of its entirety, right? And even if you think about like heritage brands, 
100, 200 year old brands, they're still the same spirit and heart that they have. Things they care about, you know, that why, for example. But the way they speak might change a little bit, you know, whether tonally um, or, or what have you. But uh, yeah, I just think as culture evolves, so should you. Um, as the economy changes, as politics change, as, you know, social norms and cues change, um, you should change along with them. And whether that means changing your your manner of speaking or changing things you care about. Um, but I think they're just sort of tweaks here and there that you could make uh, to make sure that your brand really stands the test of time. Eric, thank you so much. This has been incredible. We are going to be back in for one more week, one more snack to look out for some do's and don'ts. Thank you so much.